Bayland in Budapest. Oh, don't you love the, hello? I love it. We should do recordings in here. I'll tell you about this in a minute. No, we're not moving out. <laughs> it kind of looks like we are. Anyway, he writes to me and he says, I'd be interested in your opinion about field coil drivers. One can read very enthusiastic opinions about them, and while they are niche products these days, some believe they will become more popular in the future because of certain inherited advantages of the field coil-based designs versus speaker drivers using any kind of permanent magnet. Have you got any experience with field coils and how they sound? Um, well, I know what they are. I have no experience listening to them. So I, I cornered uh, our resident speaker genius, Chris Brunhaver, and asked him about it. And he said, yeah, they're interesting. They have some advantages. Uh, and they have more disadvantages than advantages. So that's why we, we don't use it. So let me explain what a field coil loudspeaker driver is. As you probably know, a woofer, let's just take a woofer, has a big permanent magnet and a coil connected to a cone. The coil is where we put the power amplifier, his outputs into it, and as power goes into that coil, it develops a magnetic field, and that magnetic field either is attracted to the permanent magnet or repelled away from the permanent magnet, moving the cone back and forth, right? That's how that works. A field coil is the same principle, except instead of a permanent magnet, it has a coil, just like this speaker coil. But this is a big coil. This is an electromagnetic coil that is constantly on and producing a very strong magnetic field. So the advantage is that you can get a much steadier magnetic field because as the coil is moving in and out, it, is it, it, it changes in linearity as it gets farther and closer towards the magnet. And the field strength can actually change. In a field coil, where we have this strong electromagnetic field that is generated with the power from plunging it into the wall, we can get a much more constant magnetic force. The downside to it is that there is a type of compression that happens when you get the, the magnet hot and you're gonna make the magnet hot. So you're, you're pumping energy into this thing, you're creating a lot of heat and it causes other problems, which Chris Brunhaver would be much better at explaining than I, but that's basically it. So it's just, and, and they used to do it a long time ago before they had really strong magnets. But you know, today we have neo magnets, we've got really excellent ceramic magnets, we've got mag magnets of extraordinary strength if we want to use them, and they are permanent. Okay. so. No, I don't have any experience with it, but that's kind of what they all are. Look at this place, huh? I mean, we're talking about a cavern here, and this is our kind of our main warehouse. You notice how the racks go like this? Well, originally, we thought this would be the best way to store a lot of stuff. As we grow, we're getting more stuff and we're running out of room, but we have, you know, our 30,000 square foot building and that's what we got. So we're not getting a new building. So what they're doing is they're going to tear all these down and they're going to, they have some plan. Because see, we can't get a stacker in here. The forklift, it won't, it won't, you can't turn it around and, and do it. So they're going to change all of this so we can get the stacker in, we can put things up higher that are heavy. And so that's what this is all about. Exciting, right? <laughs> Eh, all right. I don't know. I just got to show you all this stuff, right? We're just sharing. Okay. Talk to you later. Thanks.